that same question that we worked before. With gravitational force, would a 100 kilogram player, football player, experience from the Earth? We used this equation to calculate it before, and we found Fg is equal a thousand newtons. If you recall, minus a thousand newtons, the minus telling us it's downwards. What about here? What if we calculate it here? What would this give us? Okay, so we calculate it. F is going to be G. Let me. Mass of the player, mass of the Earth, over radius of the Earth, squared. So I'm going to need to get all of these values. Okay, now uh, mass of the Earth. is okay I'm just just trying to make sure what I'm uh, to give you the exact value I'm typing on Google Earth mass you know and uh, it's six approximately six ten to the 24 kilograms now Earth radius. Ah, amazing. Google didn't um, bring it up like uh, like it did for Earth mass. Let's see. So it depends on the order of the way you write it. But I wrote it uh, the opposite way now. Radius of the Earth. And then I get radius of the Earth. You know, these values are correct. I know them. I was making a check here to make sure that I have them right, but it's 6.4 uh, 10 to the 3 kilometers or 6.4 10 to the 6 meters. I'm doing a, a slight roundup from the value given by Google here. Okay, so I'm going to plug in these values. So that's 6.67 10 to the minus 11 Newton meter squared per kilogram squared times a hundred kilograms times sorry here uh, for the space 6.10 to the 24 kilograms over 6.4 10 to the 6 meters squared. Okay, I'm going to try to complete that. Okay, now uh, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. 100 times 610 to the 24, that makes it 610 to the 26 we added two zeros to the other one, kilogram squared. And here, 6.4 squared is going to be about 41. 41. And then we have 10 to the 6 squared. That would make it 10 to the 12 squared. I mean 10 to the 12. And we have the meter squared that's going to cancel with this one and the kilogram squared that's going to cancel with this one. Okay, so we are left with, I'm going to erase the values here and write on top. Sorry about this. I meant to prepare this slide but too many of them. Okay, so F is going to be 6.67 10 to the minus 11 times 6 10 to the 26. Okay, so I'm going to calculate that in the side here with a calculator. That gives us about 40 
I calculated just 6.67 times 6 that gives us about 40 and then times I have 10 to the minus 11 and 10 to the 26 that gives us 10 to the 15 newtons over 41 10 to the 12 Uh, this is plus 15, my mistake. Minus 11 plus 26 is plus 15. Okay, and that's, you see here, 40 over 41 is about 1. So that gives us about 10 to the 3 newtons. That's the same value that we found here. Okay, and that's key. So both equations give us the same value. We are not going to be using, obviously, this equation to calculate the gravitational force on an object at the surface of the Earth. That would not make sense when we can use this one. Okay? But uh, just to understand the origin of this equation, we had to go through the process once to see <coughs> where do the quantities come from. In summary, whenever I have two objects that have mass, they are going to exert on each other this kind of force, the gravitational force that's given by that expression. Now, when we have an object that has a mass on the surface of a planet, we usually use this expression instead, where G would be the gravitational field at the surface of that planet. G is given by this expression at the surface of the planet. Now, I didn't calculate it here, but I could have calculated it for the surface of the Earth by plugging in the values, say 6.67, 10 to the minus 11, Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. Now, mass of the planet that we said 6, 10 to the 24, I believe, kilograms. And then over the radius from the center of the planet, so if we are at approximately sea level, we say 6.4, 10 to the 6 meter squared. Now, if we do the calculation for this, we should be able, I'm not going to do it right now, but if you want to do it uh, just for the fun of it, we should be able to find that 9.8. The unit we are going to find is going to be newtons per kilogram. Okay, newtons per kilogram is the same as meters per second squared. They are equal to each other. How do you know that? Because when you write F M times A, now this is Newtons, this is kilograms, Newtons divided by kilograms, that's the unit for A. For A. Which is also the acceleration, which is meters per second squared. Okay? Now, in terms of calculations, uh, a lot of times, all what we deal with, and for example, um, since my purpose in the course is not just to deal with uh, arithmetics of making you calculate things like this, uh, even though it's very important to know how to do that, obviously, uh, this is conceptually, my focus is going to be some, somewhat like this. What is your mass at the surface of a planet twice as massive as the Earth by, but having the same radius? Okay? So like the effect of different quantities on uh, the quantities that we deal with. Of course, you see this first one here is a little of a trick question. It is asking us, what is your mass? Hopefully, your mass is the same no matter where you are. So mass, no change. The mass is not affected 
by the gravitational field. Mass is a measure of the amount of matter, and that's the same uh, anywhere an object is. Now, what about your weight? The weight is a different story. Now, for weight, now since they tell us of a planet that's different than the Earth, in terms of size, we cannot use just mg. So what we are going to do is compare both equations. The gravitational force, uh, force on Earth is given by g, your mass, mass of Earth, of a radius of Earth squared. The expression on another planet, I'm going to just write P, it's going to be G, your mass, mass of the planet over radius of the planet squared. Now here, what do they tell us? They tell us that this planet is twice as massive as the Earth, but having the same radius. So what does that say? It says that this is the same. Of course, we know that G is the same. And we know that your mass is the same. So what's the only thing changing? MP is twice as big as MR. If everything is the same and I double this, what would I get? I get an FP that's twice as much as this. So in other words, F on the planet is twice as much as F on the Earth. Okay? Let's try another one. What is your weight at the surface of a planet? This time it is as massive as the Earth, but having twice the radius. Okay, we are uh, reversing it here. Okay, so I'm going to write just Fe this time. The gravitational force on the Earth is G mass, uh, your mass, mass of the Earth over radius of the Earth squared. And here, F on the planet is going to be G, your mass, mass of the planet, of, over radius of the planet square. Now, what do they say? They say the mass is the same, which means this is the same, this is the same, and this is the same, which means all of this is the same in both equations. So what's going to change? Instead of Re, I have twice Re in here. Okay, let's try to implement that. So I'm not going to write everything. I'm going to just put a symbol to what's the same. And here instead of Rp, I'm going to have twice Re squared. So that's going to be equal to whatever is the same over twice squared times Re squared, which is whatever is the same over 4 Re squared. But what's Re squared? That's here. So whatever is the same became bigger now. This is what's the same now. And I'm left with one-fourth of whatever is the same. So what does that tell me? Now if I have a less dense planet having the same mass but twice the radius, I'm going to have, I'm going to feel a lesser gravitational force in this particular case, it's a fourth as much.